Okay, so in the last video, somebody was talking about trading with a 10 pip stop to make 30 pips, and I think you can do that sometimes, but not all the time. And here I'm trading with a 50 pip and a 34 pip and a um, 100 pip stop. So I don't have a 75 pip stop. I just make a big jump here from a 10 pip stop. I'm sorry. Wait, I do have 25. I don't have any 75, so you just take a 25 and combine it that with a uh, with a 50. I didn't really write every one because I wanted to keep this at like a hard dollar risk of 10. And I'm just doing it from the buy side right now on the dollar yen, which I'm buying. I've been buying this whole bottom. And... Um, I'm lit, my first X is going to be here at uh, 107, 8 to 107, 9. Back at the predictable last known blowout of a a wick, destroyed wick. Also, it is the um, the toppling of this volatility drying up, which forms this triangle. Gives you that nice. Uh, Triple touch breaks, uh, closes below. If you're looking for confirmation, when it closes below this trend line, you just get in. The other way to do it is to build a position during this phase of the first dead cat bounce. You're going to sell a little bit here uh, at the market. Okay, this is two days up. So if you're going to do the daily, no nonsense trades on the daily charts. So I got his view of the world. Uh, my recommendation for people that look at the daily is to say, wow, it just went plunging down. Maybe this is a dead cat bounce and we could sell here, but how much am I going to scalp out when they stop hunt the wick from this last day? When they come after this guy who went long, maybe he went long here and he put his stop in here, right, just to be on the safe side. Or he bought here, and he put his stop right there, and they nailed him, and then he ripped, ripped up. So all that different stuff is going on around, you know, in the vicinity of everything. So the um, current state of affairs is I'm buying this plunge. And that's it. The yeah, the the euro dollar trade. Um, since I'm really good at uh, picking bottoms, <laughs> so I really like to buy the the bottom. I actually, just from trading stocks, I, I can pretty much uh, handle the dead cat bounces and the um, full swing, um, deep discount, unfair value smash smash uh, downs here uh, the euro to the yen uh, the moves already done I mean I think that most people that are bullish probably swept up here in limits they're under water on that top ticket they're in a drawdown that just goes with the territory of buying this trailing vacuum in what you consider to be hopefully an uptrend because this price pulse is so strong here that it just says Wow, uh, you know, and look at the exquisite stop hunt before we leave the station at the round number. Just a dumb shit trade. Based on the daily, based on an auction, that's not a theory, it's a real thing. I mean, this is literally like, wow, there is nobody that, don't forget this little mini trap. So we tr wick to wick traps, and this one is lower risk because... In, and it goes deeper back. And, of course, there's the guy that bought this one. And he stayed, he had a wide enough stop. He was willing to buy this whole area, and he only got filled on that. So the people that buy this, deep, old prices, may be different people than the ones that say, well, I'm going to really load up here on this precision point, which is the, 
from, and this is where you are counting back three days and four days back. I mean, a low from four days ago, that's that snug. That's just, and um, you're running the, this is your five pip grid here. So if your broker is going to give you one pip, you should be able to squeeze something out of that. You know, if you go trade with Pike, go to Pike's way. He's that you can do this trade, right? Got sell limits in here, right? You just set it and forget it. There's nothing you do is going to change whether or not sellers are going to come in on that rooftop. Nothing you do is going to change it. So definitely for the euro, people are bailing on that price pulse. I mean, for the euro, it was a clean move into that window. So let me go to the. I got still got to get a new broker going here for the demos. I want to get to the new broker. It's Pike, you know, Pike's broker. So here is the um, Euro dollar. Overshot the hundred yard line. We uh, put in short-term tickets here. I've got filled on those. Maybe I don't know how long the orders lasted on that. I think I put dailies in. I tried to stick to the daily scripts here because I don't want to have to keep putting these fucking orders in here. It doesn't make any sense. If you're going to buy 100 pips deep, you might as well make them last all day. Nothing's going to change the idea of buying low. You know, I get that you got stopped out of this. If you bought this real heavy and you just fucking with, didn't even take advantage of this dead cat bounce, like you just literally bought that whole thing on limits, that's a different kind of person than a person that buys at the market because it's screaming down, down, hold it, buy a little bit more, slightly down, dump everything, right? This is their break-even trade. Or they have limits that started here, and they're underwater until we get to here. And here's the big debate zone, right? That was the big window. And you crush it, and you come back and revisit that, and then you're off to the races. As you keep filling the top of the, you know, the cup and handle starts down here. This is the first cup fractally, and then you have this cup within the cup. Like here's your Gartley, right? Here's your... Gar Gartley, the void style Gartley. Then you touch down into this. You, you have a big fight here, and there's eh, little scalps to be had if you've got the targets set up very tight. But look at the four-hour pressure building up just in a perfect, smooth, and this would be an ATR of highs only. If you can imagine an indicator of ATR of highs only, only when the ATR gets small does the highs matter and here it's like a turtle traders breakout you're getting filled as it goes up no fills on the cell literally a perfect breakout as you come up into here sellers are already on top of that double wick for the scalp they pull it back to here it's just like a it's like a, a football game for real it's just like okay first down okay get, make it to here pull it back to here we know we came back to here. That wick says that at some point we came back to here after this time frame. It's all you need to know. You ain't got to look at the, this four-hour chart. You ain't got to look at the one-hour chart to know that. Here, if you're running trailing buy limits to get along this, real fat tickets, right, and you scalp to make 10 and you got targets to make X, right, you got to put that trade plan in place here. You could have traded non-directionally here. You would, unfortunately, you would have got trapped here on this wick. If you did a passive entry based on pure confirmation, it would be a buy stop, a trailing buy stop to enter whenever the breeze picks up to the north again. So... Wait, the computer's too slow. So,
if you imagine a trailing buy stop on top of the four hour chart because you think you're in an uptrend you think you're in an uptrend what is the most logical place and hopefully you can check in with the market every eight hours or every day and say well come to think of it as far as highs go we're getting lower highs <laughs> if I place a buy stop there you get picked up on confirmation entry of course I don't want to make the mistake of running the sell bot here and getting trapped and taken out but if I'm mostly long and if I did a cancel replace so when people talk about back testing it's killing me on this uh, no nonsense did another video talking about and people in the comments are talking about back testing dude you cannot back test this stuff you have to you have to literally have a trade plan for every situation you can't in the future what do you do if the market drops from your pips you gotta have a plan for that what if it doesn't go anywhere what if it doesn't for all week it only moves 20 pips all week week what are you gonna do are you gonna try to make three pips on the 15 minute chart or don't you care you just don't trade you really don't care you just you're just analyzing the market you, you know you just like to play around on the market but if you had to say for certain it's better to do incremental certainty so you have I know this is a ten dollar risk I drop it over here I put in limits I walk away I have different stops some are swing trades I might put a 1k swing trade a swing trade a swing trade a scalp a scalp a scalp now at the end of the day people think I would be going overboard but not really because I know I'm going to want to, I know that I'm going to want to buy down here. I just know how I am. I just, if I see this and this, I go, oh boy, those are the stops stacking up. We didn't get filled here. So there, here comes the market order uh, into, I engage the market order system, buy at the market. Okay. Run limits in front. Buy one at the market, run three limits in front. Because this is a shitty price. I don't care. It just is. It's every four hours, according to that one broker, you're going to pull the trigger. You know, that's a really tough thing for people to do without scrutinizing it. And this is when people say, well, you're just a bad analyst. You're a good trader, bad analyst. This one guy's claiming. And then he's claiming that. Well, yeah, I didn't write all these scripts just to trade demo. I mean, there's no way. I mean, psychologically I want to risk ten dollars that's why I wrote the scripts is so people could say what am I risking this is the Mark Douglas theory of life what's the risk okay that's it ten bucks fuck <laughs> let's go then with all the confidence of a goober I can just put limits down here all day long and just go yeah, okay that's it. and then once I did that for a whole week and never got filled I said I'm just being too careful now like I felt like I was being um, the no-nonsense guy I'm so careful I just have everything and he thinks really the the, the oh god he was talking about his some robot that he or some system he ran and he took it to break even he goes I stuck with it till it came back to break even I'm like oh yeah that's really I think I'm going to launch that as my next machine. And he doesn't understand the virgins. Okay, so that's really interesting. The, the, the amount of movement this market can move. Uh, if you're risking 5% of your account, which this guy was claiming, um, not much flexibility there, I guess. I mean, I kind of figure if the market's telling me to risk the whole account, I'm going to risk the whole account. I'll risk the nine thousand dollars or the five thousand I started with. I'm at the nine thousand now, and I don't care what the stats say. I'm going to risk it. So here I'm going into the um, dollar yen. 
heavy duty. The guppy, um, I got filled in the guppy actually, but he didn't cash out, see? And that's a problem. <laughs> because I could have got out of this trade. You see that I got filled. You see I dropped the balls. Just like I said I would. That's the one hour chart. I dropped those balls the day before. And I'm still in that damn trade. Now, that's what it looks like. Okay, now, if you want to keep track of that, be my guest. But, like, you'd literally have to say, let's go to the guppy and find a trade. Okay, what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be buying down here. It looks like I got stopped out or cashed out of some of these because I see a couple balls down there. Here's a deep ball that must have cashed out or got stopped out. <laughs> it's balls deep into this thing. So here's another trade plan I think I, I made money on was here. I dropped these ones. All right, so here's my trade history journal. Okay, drop the balls in the in the window, just like I said. And so I've been doing that with the daily. These are 24-hour drops, but I kind of want to make them last a week now because if I'm going to go currency pair to currency pair like this and swing trade this, true swing trade you know um i would have had buy limits sitting down here that last all month because we know that's the edge of the market if you can't see that this is a bottom down here if you need a gartley or a fib tool to see this bottom and see it take out the bottom and fail to keep tanking then you shouldn't be trading i'm just going to say it straight out if you cannot see this wick tip be touched and then ripped down right if you can't see this bottom that was supposed to become a top and keep tanking and they just said uh-uh not this time <laughs> not today because this vacuum has been stacking and racking and it's time to go hunt it down into the floor and the sellers come in on the day the australian dollar okay so, and that's done. That that cork has popped. Mission completed. Bush style. Right? Nothing's really... But, you know, that's, that's at least for this currency pair, that's an outstanding in golf rejection, total auction theory really happening. Here's the floor. Here's the lonely wick. Here's your entry window. You're underwater. Then you're at break even. Then it engulfs. What else explains this behavior? You cannot, there's nothing else to explain this. Top becomes a bottom in time. The once, this is the area of panic, right? Super panic window. Bam, gotta get, gotta get there. Then, oof. Done, satisfied. Got to get there, got to get there. Got to get to here, got to get to that, 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 and then take out every goober that thinks he can run a tight stop. I mean, he's, you get, you're running 50 pips stop. These 10 pip stop guys that are commenting on my stuff, dude, you're scalping. If your broker gives you a 2 pip spread on that, you have an 8 pip stop, right? So... I don't know what people are thinking, but the guy's got zero content on his channel. Classic troller with not even a, at least the guy with a $2,900 Gartley uh, indicator that invited me to come to his show had a $29 Gartley indicator. Huh. There you go. So, Looks like we're going to flick up here a little bit. One last gust of wind possibly to the north. Like I say, dollar yen. I'm loading the wagon on this. I'm, I'm, I'm in for a penny. I'm in for a pound. I'm going a deep dive on this. I'll go with my 17 pips, 13 pips stops here. I have confidence we will not take out these tickets. I'm going to make a, with a 15 pip stop, I'm going to make 100 pips. But 
it's like uh, laying track here. Look at the volume on the, or look at the ATR, I should say. Run the ATR indicator down here. Better than volume. More dynamic range. Mimics volume. Same thing. It's volume of movement. Look at this thing. All spiky up in there. Okay, so we're under the floor. I'm looking for a rally tonight into Wednesday. Dollar yen. Beautiful setup here. Absolutely killer. Doesn't get any better than that setup. Come on. On the four hour. Here's our doji. So we, we flagged out on the daily. You can't really see it here, but this one rally on the daily was the only chance for the bulls to make money on clothes and the bears to get on the short train. I think the last of the trend traders, the last of the Mohicans are in on that. And now we come to the painful reality that we are done tanking people. It is time to buy the hell out of this thing. On the weekly, it's outstanding down two weeks. It took out last week's low. Still coming after this wick down in Disneyland, for God's sakes. Look at this. Are you kidding me? 300 pips away. Can we get there tonight? I don't know. Time says a different story. So on closing prices on the weekly, that wick don't even show up. That's the beauty of closing prices. It takes the noise out. That is the, the most exquisite aspect is there's no noise. It's a nice, clean... We're getting divergence on the three-period RSI in this right now on the dailies. Look at this run. So just doing a simple buy-stop treatment, going with the flow. Buy-stops are trailing, no fill. Cancel replace every day, looking to get picked up in the stream. There you go. Do you need indicators for that? I mean, even the bears that even the people that said this bottom's another top we're going to keep tanking they're like no we better we better tighten up our stops and as they tighten up right they clean they create a giant run but you you want to cancel and replace and have your robot now here's where the the robots can make money so all i need is a robot that will buy um the more this, like the, the shallower this drop, okay, there's a robot that comes in because the criteria is X. The fact that this to here is such a small amount, there's a robot that sees that and goes, put a, put a, put a ticket in. Then there's another robot that sees this and puts a different style of ticket in. And a robot that sees, um, well, they do a cancel replace, though. And the next robot that sees a uh, shallow thing here, it's going to trade with a tighter stop and a bigger ticket. All right, this is to save um, order space. And faster execution, right? Because if you've got to run two of these, right, if the robot has to come in and run two micro lots instead of a 2K there. So you can cancel replace, put it on 3K. Because you're going to, inside the 3K, well, okay. You If you're going to start to grow the account, you're going to have like a 8-pip stop on a 2K. You can just double those when you get into the tight zones. So in giant swing trade, you might be holding a 1K with a 100-pip stop. But when you get to the tight, right now you can go bigger. And that system is going to come in and it's going to just glom onto this shallow drift down. Maybe not on the daily because, or maybe it is. 
Right, it's looking at the dailies going, oh boy. What the fuck? And maybe there was a, in other words, there was a trap here we can't see because it did go lower. So at some point, it trapped here and then it went lower. You cannot see that. That's another thing with backtesting is that you can't multiple time backtest, I don't think. I don't know anybody doing that sophistication of backtesting where you're taking into account all time frames. Here's a trailing sell stop stacking up for the same trade plan coming back the other way. And if the robot's going to do a cancel replace, when he gets to here, because the run has been consecutive, there's eight robots in on this one where there's only one cell, there's only one robot selling this. The higher it goes, the longer this goes, the more bots, in other words, um, at three, to describe it to the uh, robot builder, you would tell them, I want, every time we get three higher lows, put in a sell stop of X with this exact criteria. Uh, in other words, if the discrepancy here is more than 10 pips for three periods, launch a sell stop. And we would custom customize that ticket. When we get a move of this big, we're going to put in a wider stop because the volatility just kicked up. And we'll put sell stop in there too. And if it kicks up again, we're going to put another. Um, we have a special robot that comes in. And when it sees five days up, it's putting a sell stop. But also, the robot that sees one day up is putting a sell stop in. You see what I mean? Now, these are commingling at the top of here. By the time this breaks away, we're getting filled on the scalps that take, that take the... This is for daily no-nonsense people. I call it trading bar by bar on the dailies with a trade plan that fits the volatility of the last few days. Look at this trap trade here. Now here your algo, if you want to call this an algo, buy stops in a, uh, your buy stop stacking up here, right? Why? Because what's in an uptrend? You want to, you want to ride it up. And it, if you do a cancel replace every day and keep stacking this up and you keep tightening your trade plans up, even though this went down eventually, if you can scalp 10, 20, 30 pips out of that before they smash it, or are you selling this window on limits at the same time, you're getting filled on buy stops, and that is how you make the maximum amount of money efficiency. So that is the way to really milk it. Now, the, the problem on the sell side, if you notice, if you can just visually backtest this in the most stupid way of talking about higher lows, okay? Higher lows, we take out and we make a new low. We've trapped a money management bot that went long here in this auction window of 20 pips. They went long on that plunge. And this is a high velocity smash down. The guys that trade at the end of the day bought and the guys that trade with tighter stops when it's slightly down and the guys that trade on buy. I mean, everybody's in on this one. The limit guys got filled here at the 100 yard line. So, you know, it's just a clean run. Now, if you load up on that, you made $1,000, right? Standard lock. Would you stay through the whole ride? I'd be selling into this, right? I'm cashing out into that. <sighs> On the four-hour chart, I might add on pullbacks. If I saw it pull back a little bit, I'd say, you know what? It doesn't break my rule. I'm allowed to buy if it's down. So I made my system contrarian at the market, volatility-based for breakout schemes, strategies, tactics, trying to encompass three approaches here it's like on the daily you're like okay you know i see that um you made a nice profit there but the volatility was too big here for you to put in the breakout systems what are you going to do during this uh, this area if you're locked out of a trade because you're over at no nonsense think about bar by bar trading 
Think about just taking reality as it comes at you. Don't sugarcoat it with your moving averages and all this stuff. And I just don't think that's the way to go. I think you have to deal with it. These little notches here are so important for the entry window on a limit. And when you see it rocket the fuck up, you sell at the market. Just in case, that is just too fast of a move. And it's actually into this closing structure. Here's the argument for the third entry technique is the sell limit shallow sell limits on daily shallow buy limits on daily get picked up on a ticket what do you know look get picked up on some tickets before the plunge selling at the market at the same time you have sell limits you're selling at the market and you put some goober buy stops in if need be i would only trade 20 percent stops try to trade 60 percent to 70 percent limits and at the market 30 percent maybe i mean the stops are terrible because if you can see them coming after that stop just get the fucking in the market come on i mean just chase it a little bit and have a scalp built into the chase though because you're probably going to get smashed the 10 pip stop guy it's really an 8 pip stop you have to accept that fact. If you're going to go trade these wackadoodle pairs, which no nonsense encourages, you really can't scalp it, so it's hard to live. The filters that I imagine he's using, and some guys said, wouldn't I wish to know? No, I wouldn't because I would just look at it and go, wow, it's worse than I thought, you know. Um, he doesn't trade reversals. He doesn't trade divergence, and that's because he can't see divergence. Here's the daily. We're getting three period divergence right now on the daily RSI. We're also getting divergence on the trend line right now. On closing prices, we are not hitting the targets for this. I'm loading the wagon on this trade tonight. I'm going to chase this thing with real money tonight. I really want to hold on after we smash this floor this is the daily chart mind you as we clean out these stops that are stacking up and we're coming into wednesday and if we can clean house to the north here we'll be plucking off these tops all that supply is going to be sheared off we're going to carve this out wipe out those tops bam and then this would be insane right we all know people are going to cash out like insane up here if we ever make it first order of business is to stop out the last guy closing momentum is diverging from trend line projections this Triangle dead cat bounce would be your way for some guy. Watching some guy talking about reviews, and he goes, "They accused me of scalping." He goes, "I was all I was doing was using Elliott Wave. So cute. All I was doing is using Elliott Wave and holding the trade. He was short the pound for some insane amount. Long time, like a year. And they're like, "Are you sure you got into that trade?" Like. Because you can't get into trades. I've done it before with negative balances because of the way the high leverage and the allowance they give you. Anyway, so here is the juicy target, first target everybody's going to bail on. Bam. It's like child's play, these markets. So I'm going all in. I'm going to add another $200 of margin to this, and I am all in. Hog long, dollar yen. That's all there is to it. Just how it's going to be. Look at the weekly. Good God. A perfect price pulse. And we are diverging from the channel. Definitely not hitting uh, targets on that. 
Looking to break this trend line now. Big long ass weekly trend line. I want to get in before we break it. A nice walk down. A nice venture below this psycho price here, which became the pivot window. Kind of on close, kind of on the this stuff here. I guess this is the big, nice big trap window there. Yes, yeah, so I think it's um, lights out for the yen now. Bitcoin is ripping north like you can't believe. Dollar CAD's in the same buy situation as the yen. Obvious on closing prices. We've already cashed out here to the floor, though. If you're a scalper, you could have cashed out here. But now we're coming back for one more house cleaning on the highs of the CAD. Same story, different currency pair. Got to go hunt down those highs. The, the New Zealand dollar is pissed off and screaming back into the floor here. To here is the, is the new frontier. Looks like oil's going to make a stampede. So it looks like there's going to be war in Iran, according to my charts. So it's, it's going to go up, and then they're going to be war, and then they go, look, it went up. Look, it's up. Yeah. Dude, everybody's jumping on the train here. Look at the euro. I mean, look at the um, the uh, Dow thirty poking into the window. And here comes our trusty Bitcoin, screaming into the seller's window. If you're not selling above here, oh my God, that is going to be psychotic. That's a two month top. It's the seller's window this whole time. There's not even a trade in there. They destroyed that window. There wasn't one pull. There was one pullback in there. You'd have to be on the one hour chart to trade that. Right? You'd have to scalp this shit. There's no way, right? You'd have to be like this, day trading it. Right. The psychotic run into this window. See, you can't see it on the daily. The daily is nonstop, but here you would have to day trade. You'd have to cut, you'd have to fade all these fractals. You would have to sell. This is your signal. When you see a fractal, you put sell limits above that fractal because that's Williams is the lonely fractal. It's sitting there waiting for your sell limit. And if you go and if you can see that triangle i going to put a sell ticket right on, uh, right underneath that uh, flying saucer. You trade the inversion of that. I don't know if you got filled here, but that would have been a nice fill. Another lonely wick entry. William's lonely wick. So fade the, just go against Williams on the small time frames. It's not going to work on the, well, I guess it does. It's just not a lot of trading, see? Like this, that just that one entry there, you know. And here, Williams Fractal never showed up, but you could see that. Right? You could see that. That shows on the one hour, but not on the four. But daily, it's non-existent. There just ain't no fractals. I mean, this is your only chance to get in, is when they come after this Right, they make a triple bottom. You got to be willing to buy as we approach this this triangle thing. Litecoin looks like it's had its back off. CAD's pent up for a run. Boeing's back. People are buying the dollar here on this dip. Looks like it could still tank though. What else we got here? Scrolling through the... Uh, did Tesla come back to life? Yeah, looking for the scalp. Tesla came back for the scalp. And for the scalp. 
it was it was too unfair and everybody bailed right here at support looks like they're gonna tank again that drug company's tanking i think pharmaceuticals yeah everybody's uh there's all uh doing heroin now it's, uh, Pfizer yeah, drug company there is doing good there's toilet paper Mexican peso looks fragile the dollar really looks like it's going to just break out of this channel and, and just crush and just start coming after all of this uh, void here so that could be interesting this thing melts down what will they say is that when we send everybody home across the border? Top became a bottom here. Once you start taking out these supports, yikes. Got support down here, though. So, yeah, this thing's been on fire since... Uh, look at this. There's your Ryan Brown political trade. Mexico. Peso. Treading water. Destroying people's minds. The trend traders are going to kill themselves. All right, let's see. You got S and P five hundred is uh, Nasdaq was the leader, but it's falling now. It's got a shoulder in. Japan was supposed to pick up the slack. I was looking for the German market to. German market has yet to take the lead. Looks like Amex is pulling back as Bitcoin goes up. Not that they're related, but I can see how people would think like that. Yeah, people are going to go to that. They're like, yeah, I'm going to float my money in Bitcoin for 30 days instead of 30 days on Amex. Supply and demand, I guess, driving the price of that. Don't know how it works. Um, going back to my British Pound. Um couple of trades here and no, I don't think it really uh, we made a little bit of money there I don't know how long these this had to last at least a day and they may have expired depending when I dropped them it's 24 hours actually so this whole rack here didn't fill till um rack of balls so I did put the um you know this top one in now depending where the stops were and we didn't fill the bottom but there's another snapshot journal of the trade plan. If you hold it now, I would hold it through this because look, we're going to drift up and at least make it back to the round number. You could cash out there if you missed your exit. Okay, so I'm trying to get about 10 grand here. Okay, so I'm going to put, I put in. I got uh, almost three thousand dollars of margin going. That's just about where I want to be, actually. And this is the hourly chart as we drift up in Asia. Here we come out of the gate. Let's see what we can do in fifteen-minute chart here. Let's condense it out a little bit. Okay, I say we could make the argument for a top bottom on the fifteen, and we got to keep tanking. We got to keep going up. I heard a guy today in the radio talking about gold gold market you got to get you know you got to get in man it's going up we're excited i thought oh thanks for the sell signal buddy we're excited and i feel that way here like I, i'm bullish here on this uh, pullback and i feel like you know now they're gonna just smash it down but it's coming out of asia nicely here after this um classic uh, double top becomes retested at the end of the day you know, we, we rifle into this void. Everybody cashes out. Sellers come in. We pull it back to the structure here. And there's enough people trading this currency to get a nice flow, nice order flow. And um, people have already sold here, you can see. People that sell that, this window up in here, that's, that's their exit window there they cashed out if you're just trying to make the five pips you know 
And sometimes you don't make your 30 pips, don't forget. Sometimes you have to settle for what the market's going to give you in that amount of time. I got these terrible buy stops up here I kind of want to get rid of, but I eh, kind of want to leave them in. Those will be my goober entries. I'm going to add to the position up here. It's kind of stupid. I really should delete those. If I think I've got too much margin rolling, um, but then again, add to a winner. All these things go through your mind. And, of course, with this many tickets, you know, you have to say you're in a lot of tickets. So maybe it's okay to just let it go and not worry. So the, the, all the tickets makes it easier to trade because you're less responsible. See, it looks like are going to pop here. Half hour charts. So on the half hour uh, buy stop system, it would be long right now, right? And the uh, robots that are stacking up, it was a cancel replace. And now there's a 10K here where there's only a 1K here, 5K, now a 10K. And we're, scalp we're scalping out. We cashed out of some stuff right just now. And now we're just slightly in. Now we come back in with buy limits. So on the tablet, I'm able to um, look at the dollar, yen. And I'm doing two currencies on the tablet. Dollar, yen. Euro yen. So I just run vertically, and I can see this uh, potential plunge here, right? If I don't want to sell this top with a precision drop or a sell stop, I could run sell stops here on the tablet, but then I don't like that fill. When it comes down, I can just look at this any time of day and see if we're up here, I always want to be running one hour, two hour, three hour buy limits to capture this so I don't have to worry about babysitting the market. But I want to go in the store. I don't have to sit there and keep staring at this thing. Although it's fun to have a constant snapshot of your trade because then you can feel safe. <laughs> well, because the rogue wave will never get you. Well, this is your thinking. That you're immune from the wrong wave. I feel like deleting these DM orders too. Here, I'm going to go do it. Um, I just don't want to get trapped on this. I'm not, I don't want to overpay. So that's where the sellers are going to be. And that's the problem with the daily orders that are all day long. Is that So there's one called close order. If you place it right near that ticket. I hope it's not going to take off a, order, a ticket that I'm in. Because I have some underwater orders running right now. I'm underwater. So let me get rid of this uh, exposure to getting into more uh, problems and to adding to the position because I'm right at 2,900 of margin. I want to cash out as we go up. Let me get to the balance here. So at this profit level, if by 930 I can be up at uh, $12,000, then I will have freed up, I'll have $8,000 of margin available. I'll probably be at $2,000 of usage. I have like 9000 free, $2,000 of usage. Balance goes to $1,300, let us say. That's my target by um, 8.30. That's my greedy target by 8.30. By 9 o'clock, I think it's doable, so... That's what I'm aiming at. Nine o'clock. I'm giving this market plenty of time to get it shut together. I love it on the four hour. On the daily, it's a no brainer. If you're a daily chart trader, take advantage of this divergence line here on dailies coming into Wednesday. It's no brainer trade people. Obviously. Trend lines just don't work. They work if you work them. It's like AA people. Step away from the shot glass. Go to your MT4 platform. Buy the dollar yen. I'm just saying. Give it a nice fat wide stop. Look at the monthly. Anybody bearish on this thing? Anybody selling? 
What's the sentiment indicator here? Are you willing to trade this reversal? It's a perfect price pulse. It's like your Gartley uh, pattern there. Even the Gartley guys are on this one. You can tell. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Hey, you can see the fucking tickets coming in right now. I'm sure the harmonic scanners are all over this trade. Obviously. Like, who can't see these patterns? All right, so we're in. We're in for a penny. We're in for a pound. 